in your year in high school. Jesse Kurtz, you know, universe, uh, excuse me, I always say that with a college program. Uh, Air Force Academy color analyst and also an anchor for the Mountain West Conference Network joins us on 365 Sports. Jesse, thank you very much for your time. What's been the reaction about the bowl game with Air Force playing Baylor? Oh, excited. I mean, there are so many guys that are at the Academy football players I'm speaking of that when the, when the, uh, the matchup was announced, were literally jumping for joy. Um, you know, when, you, we, when we get a chance to, to go on a national stage like a bowl game, uh, you want to play you know, the best possible teams that you can. And Baylor, given the history and the success that they've had and the names that have come through there, I mean, that, that's a name. That's a national name. So uh, when, when the fellas heard that it was going to be Baylor, it was just sheer joy and excitement and ready to get to work because they know the challenge that, that awaits them when they get down to Fort Worth to take on the Baylor Bears. Well, you also have uh, a, a good amount of Texans on the team, including a couple of Central Texans, Ben Britton uh, and uh, Wesley and Dago, who's your uh, starting tackle, uh, are, are from Waco. Yeah, absolutely. And those are two of the guys that were – they were really excited, and Ben Britton hasn't played a lot, but Ben Britton has, uh, when, when he's got on the field, he's made his presence known through an 80-yard touchdown pass. I believe it was his first pass of the season, but nonetheless came in um, to spell the starter who was injured for a play, went out there and, and tossed a dime for a touchdown. So we're excited to have Ben Britton on the team. Trey Taylor, also a, a guy that is um, from Texas, uh, certainly excited. He's a starting safety, in my opinion, one of the top safeties in the Mountain West. So uh, there are a number of guys in there. Texas has always been a, a very fertile recruiting ground uh, for really everybody, but for the Air Force Academy because of the patriotism uh, that comes out of the great state of Texas, um, to have you know guys from that area be interested in, in raising the right hand, serving, and then playing football at the Air Force Academy, we're very blessed to go back down to Texas and, and, uh, and play football in front of those great fans. So, Jesse, uh, Troy Calhoun's been around for a while now, and, and looking at what could potentially occur with an Air Force win, they'd be back-to-back -back years with uh, 10 wins, be back-to-back -back bowl wins, three out of the last four years with both of those marks as well. Uh, a program that's had a lot of success, but what would you just kind of describe the state of the program as right now? What's kind of the, the theme, if you will, the, the I guess the, the big takeaway uh, in looking at Air Force from the 20,000-foot view? Yeah, this is as good of a stretch as this program has had uh, in decades, and, and maybe ever. Because if you take the COVID season out of the equation, it could have a uh, it has a chance to have three straight ten win seasons. Because that's a ten win season uh, in uh, in 2019, capping it off with a win against Washington State in the Cheez It Bowl. 2020, we all know about that. There was only six games played. Take that out. And then uh, last year, another 10-win season, a win against Louisville in the, uh, the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl, and then this year, uh, nine wins. This is a program that has, continues to, to really set the bar high, and that starts with Troy Calhoun. I think, for, for your money, he is the most brilliant football mind in the country. And I don't think it's anywhere close. Troy Calhoun has been widely thought of as a brilliant mind, a, a great offensive mind at the NFL level, has had plenty of opportunities. He's coached in the NFL as an offensive coordinator for the Texans, has been lured in some ways to go back to the NFL, but he's, he, he's very proud of what he's done here at the Academy and has stayed. Um, so with what he does on game days and the preparation and the type of guys he brings into this program, it, it's, that's really the secret sauce, having the right people and, you know, th this is a program that's got a chance to, uh, I think, five straight wins over a, a Power 5 opponent mm -hmm. if they were you know, able to play Baylor tight and get a win, beat Colorado in 19, beat Washington, then beat Louisville, then beat Colorado this year, and now a chance to take on the, the Baylor Bears. So great opportunity, and it's coming at a great time for Air Force because this program is really – um, really at the pinnacle of, of where it's been over the last couple of decades. The the history of the coaches at Air Force, Bill Parcells was for the a year, three and eight. Ken Hatfield's name because of what he did at Arkansas and elsewhere. We had a losing record. But the, the continuity from Fisher to Barry to Troy Calhoun is nearly 40 years. How much is yeah. that? How, how just – you just don't see that much anymore. Well, I, I think that to your point, I think that's a big reason for Air Force's success. Um, look, in, in modern college football now, the turnover that you have 
at the coaching level uh, and then the player level, it's hard to gain a whole lot of traction. And I believe only Iowa has continuity that is longer than the Air Force Academy when, with Hayden Fry and Kirk Ferentz. You got Fisher to Barry that came in here in 1984, stayed for you know almost a, a quarter of a century all the way until 2007. And then Troy Calhoun takes over, and he's in his 16th season. It takes a special person to have success there. It takes a person that embraces the mission, embraces that, you know, this is football is secondary. The mission is always going to be first. Academics are going to be second. And then, you know, you throw in football. Someone that embraces that and really is able to communicate that to recruits and saying, here's what we're here for, here's what is important, and here's how we're going to win. If you don't embrace those things, it's incredibly difficult to have success. Now, if you have someone that comes in, like a Troy Calhoun that's walked through those shoes, uh, he's an alum, played football there, was an assistant coach there, and then kind of went out and did his thing as an assistant coach in the college ranks and then the NFL ranks. But he knows exactly what it takes to succeed there, knows what those kids are going through. So that consistency of when he goes in and tells mom and dad, your kid, your son is going to be in great hands, and here are the things that are going to be expected of him, and here are the great things and the great hurdles that he'll be able to clear – um, and then deliver on that and stay all four years, well, that speaks to something. Now you're getting kids that, that come back because you know that, you know what, he's going to be here. He believes in this. I've heard great things. So that consistency, I think, is right at the top of reasons that the Air Force Academy has had such a great run under Troy Calhoun. Jesse Kurtz, uh, color analyst for the Air Force Academy football team in Mountain West Conference anchor, network anchor with us on 365 Sports. Jesse, I I hope this isn't too inside uh, radio for our uh, listeners here, but considering that you have not had a game where Air Force has thrown double-digit passes, have you ever (laughs) sat in the booth and said, man, this thing is dragging on? (laughs) (laughs) Um, No. You know what? It's funny. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this two ways. One, no. But there are times that I go back home and I have two young boys, a a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old, and they give me that, man, no passes again. (laughs) So I get what you're saying. But I'll tell you, our games go so fast. It's not uncommon for one of our games to be over in under three hours, two hours and 57 minutes, because the clock moved. There there have been plenty of games where, I'll give you an Air Force Army uh, instance, we played at Army, and Army took the opening possession and went 14 minutes without giving us the ball. And then we took the ball and then went about seven minutes. The first half was over in about 42 minutes. Um, so games move by fast, um, and, and I've come very accustomed to the way that we run an offense. But I, I see what you're saying, and it, there, are, there are times, yes, where the variety is not there. So we look for a, that, that variety in the opponent. So we'll look to you guys to wow us with some things that you do, and then we'll just lull you to sleep. How does that work? That sounds good to me. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, a big part of that rushing attack, uh, I go over you know box scores and recaps every, every weekend, and always at the top of the rushing statistics basically every week is Brad Roberts. And, and you know, obviously a part of that is just what uh, Air Force does running the football as much as they do, but – Back-to-back incredible years for him, 1,600-plus yards, 15 touchdowns this year, similar numbers last year. I I don't know much about Brad Roberts, but I feel like I've seen his name 100 times. What can you tell us about him and just how impactful he is for this Air Force program? Well, I'll I'll tell you the best part about about Brad Roberts, and the statistics speak for themselves. You know, he's the single-season rushing leader ever at Air Force. That says something, right? I mean, that's all they do is run the football for for three-plus decades to be the all-time leader in a season, I think, speaks for itself. Um, he would be the all-time career rushing leader if not for the COVID season. And you think about the great running backs that have come through here, the great quarterbacks that have run the football. I mean, D. Dallas, right at the top of that list, the Heisman Trophy finalists. Um, the Morgan brothers from Texas yep. um, are two of the all-time greats. Passing them, he broke Bo Morgan's all-time record of 100-yard games in a career earlier this year. If you take the COVID season out, if you would have given him 12 games, he would have blown past the record, I believe, by about week four. Mm -hmm. So that tells you how many times um, he has been very effective. But two things that will stand out about Brad Roberts. Um, One, his dependability. Uh, I've never seen the guy really take himself out of a game. He He carried the ball 300 times last year. It'll be on pace to do that again this year. Think about the amount of hits that you take between the tackles 
And Brad Roberts is 5'11", 210 pounds, um, but he's very smart in the way he runs the football. He always attacks the soft shoulder, so he doesn't take on big hits. So to have a guy that is that small but that tough and that dependable, it's a natural-born leader. And a guy that that came from the Denver suburban area, not very highly recruited out of Rawlinson Valley High School, really came down to North Dakota or Air Force. Um, He wants to be a pilot, so the the natural progression would be I'll go play at Air Force. Um, But just one of the best leaders and most humble football players I've ever seen. You put your name in the likes of Dallas and Morgan and Chad Hall, uh, who is uh, a coach with the the, uh, the Buffalo Bills right now, some of the all-time greats, you would never know it by spending a day with him or walking past him on the street and say, that guy's a big-time Division One football player. It's really something to watch, and I'm really proud to have been a part of this program when he has been a superstar. As you know, uh, Brigham Young played Baylor in 2021 in Waco. Then this year they played him double overtime, whatever it was, up in, obviously, uh, at, in Provo. And now they're about to join the conference with Baylor. Uh, Air Force and Baylor play in, what, 10, 15 days or so, and they're already on the schedule to play each other in non-conference, what, in 24 and 27 as well? Kind of a little yeah. preview here? Yeah. You know, I, you know when, those, when those games were scheduled, um, when, when that came down the pike, I was like, wow, this is great. A chance to go visit a new place, take on a, a wonderful program that's had all kinds of, uh, kinds of success. So to move that up at a neutral site in a bowl setting, I'm super pumped up. I mean, th- this could be a, a really fun little, you know, three game series that these two uh, get to play. And I believe one of them is, is in Waco and one's back here at the Academy, right? Yep. And 27 will be at Colorado Springs. Yes, sir. Okay, so and you know we 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 had Colorado play here at the Air Force Academy. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and uh, the Cal Bears played here in 2004. Oklahoma's been here. Uh, Notre Dame's been here a couple of times. Um, it's not often though that we get a, a team with the the national brand and the the football prowess that that Baylor has coming to here. So look forward to a a trip down to Waco and a return trip back here to Colorado Springs by the Bears uh, after we we get after it here in the bowl game down in Fort Worth. Jesse, it's great to have you on. So today's Pearl Harbor Day, which obviously we always want to remember that. Army, Navy, Saturday. Give me a choice. Who do you think is going to win that game? I'm a, you're asking me to pick between the, the, the two people that, uh, that we, we, struggle, <laughs> we struggle to like on the football field, but we really like off the football field, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go Army. And I'll go Army because I, I just think – that, that Army really feels snake bit from last year. I think they have a score to settle. I think they're the better team. I really like Ken Niamatololo, the, the head coach of Navy. But if you're asking me today who I think after seeing both teams um, this year, and I mean the both teams for the last you know dozen years, I'll go with Army because I think there's just too much that has lingered from last year that is really being hammered into the Black Knights. Uh, I'll go with Army in a, uh, a game uh, – by 10 points. Yeah, in fact, last year was an upset after Navy had that great run, and then all of a sudden yep. Army kind of turned it a little bit. Uh, Ahmad Bradshaw, who was the quarterback for Army when they broke the 14-year streak, will be our guest tomorrow to discuss Army-Navy. So, I, I mean, I honestly mean this, and I think a lot of fans have always thought this way, Jesse, is that when there's always this discussion about realignment, there is always a little bit a part of the conference or the fan base at Baylor that always thinks, man, it would be great to have the military academies as a part of a conference. That's unrealistic, but there's that kind of respect to be able to have everybody together. And I think it would be awesome. I know that's not going to happen, but it sure would be awesome. Well, the, the fact that we do get to play each other every year um, is something that, that we're blessed with those opportunities and to get those kids that um, are special, special human beings and ones that we're all grateful uh, have raised their right hand to serve, whether you're at the Army uh, at West Point or at the Naval Academy or at the United States Air Force Academy, uh, to to get to see these kids compete twice a year and, and really get after it is a blessing and something I'm thankful for. And, and I appreciate you guys and your well wishes to all three service academies because you're right. These are special kids, and, and any time we get to celebrate who they are, off the football field, I think is a great day. Don't, uh, Air Force won the Commanders Cup, right? Because they beat. Yeah, Earth. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, first yeah. time since 2016. And I'll tell you, while we would like to have the Commanders and Chief Trophy in Colorado Springs each and every year, Service Academy football, and I'm talking about the three service academies collectively, has never been in a 
better spot than it's been. Because there was a time that Air Force just mowed down Army and Navy for years. Mm -hmm. And then Navy had a resurgence under Paul Johnson, and then they dominated this series. Um, And then, you know, Army came back to the forefront with Jeff Monken, and it's been back and forth. And it's a coin flip whenever these two uh, teams meet or when we meet them. Uh, So it's great to have these two teams in any given year, our top 40 teams in the country. And that's great. Um, this year, both Army and Navy have had a down year. Um, but, you know, there's no reason to think that they won't have a bounce back. And Service Academy football, as far as being on a national scale and having teams that can really compete against anyone, anywhere, um, it's in a very good place. Has there been much discussion because of the conference with everyone else expanding and realigning and people going here and there? Obviously, there's been some names like Fresno State or San Diego State or even Boise State whose names have been out there. Has that really infiltrated the Mountain West too much? I mean, it's it's part of the it's part of the deal, right? I mean, anytime I think the Mountain West as a whole is, is very proud um, when institutions like that get mentioned as, hey, they're they're a shiny they're the shiny new object that we think we would like to have. I mean, the fact that they the Mountain West lifted Utah into uh, a couple of, of BCS bowl wins over Pitt and Alabama. And then the Pac-12 said, geez, it's a really great team. It's a really great institution, a football team. We should probably think about adding them. TCU, you know, TCU Mm -hmm. enjoyed great success in the Mountain West, went to BCS bowl games, won conference championships and, and lifted themselves into a national brand. And look at where they are now. They are now. I'll tell you, there's a lot of pride here in the Mountain West, we watched Utah win a Pac-12 championship uh, while we were at the uh, the Mountain West championship in Boise, and super proud of of what Kyle Whittingham and the Utes did. Super proud of what Gary Patterson started at TCU, and now what Sonny Dykes has done at TCU. You know, we we still consider them in some way, shape, or form part of us, uh, and we have fond memories. So to see them do that, and now you know there are obviously schools in the Mountain West are being talked about of hmm, maybe that would be a good ad. If they're not in those conversations, then we're not doing our job as a league. Um, so, you know, it, it's part of the it's part of the college football world here in 2022, and you know, we'll continue to do our job at the Mountain West office and as the the fellow institutions across the league to schedule very high to try to win those games. And you know, if that that ultimately means that they become very attractive to others, then then so be it. But we got to do our job first. And if, if they're being talked about, then we're doing a good job. Jesse, great to have you on. We'll see you soon. Jesse Kurtz, again, uh, color analyst for the Air Force Academy football team broadcast at also Mountain West Conference Network anchor.